In today's presentation, I would like to showcase some recent application we did using UPLC and the mass spectrometry for RNA therapeutics with the intention of developing methods to help ensure product quality and process consist consistency. mRNA therapeutic agents are regarded as a rising precision medicine with great promise for preventing and treating uh, cancer and genetic diseases because they can produce just about any uh, functional protein and peptide in human body. Um, in addition, the production of in vitro transcribed mRNA has many advantages, such as faster design and production, highly effective and long lasting, high transfection efficiency, low toxicity, no risk of accidental transfection or mutagenesis, easy to produce and cheaper to produce compared to um, protein therapeutics. This extraordinary advantages allow mRNA vaccine response to large scale infectious disease outbreak very swiftly, such as COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the main challenges of uh, production of mRNA therapeutics and vaccines are focused on improving the stability, um, immunogenicity, translation efficiency, and the, the delivery system. Uh, I think the stability and delivery are the most challenging one amongst all, the, all these listed challenges. There are several critical critical quality attributes for mRNA have been identified to demonstrate its performance. If we look at the cartoon structure here uh, that depicts mRNA molecules, these CQRs are five prime cap, uh, the UTRs, open reading frame, three prime uh, poly A tail, and the lipid nanoparticle. The five prime cap impacts the half lifetime of mRNA and also um, can maximize protein expression and in innate sensing. The UTRs impacts the translational efficiency. Uh, coding sequence um, here improving the can improve the protein expression. Poly A tail at the three prime controls the mRNA degradation process. The lipid nanoparticle are the most popular de delivery system for, MR for mRNA. Uh, many controls, such as optimization of the ionizable lipid components, are implemented to ensure the safety and efficacy of mRNA drug and vaccine. I will talk a little bit about the application uh, work we um, developed for the lipid nanoparticle towards the end of my presentation. Several USP chapters have been published for mRNA drug substance CQA testing. For example, Sayer sequencing, um, next generation sequencing PCR are used for identity test. Uh, reverse phase ion pairing with UV detection is used for 5 prime cap and 3 prime uh, poly A tail analysis. Recently, there are uh, concerted efforts from pharmaceutical company to apply LCMS for some of the mRNA drug substance quality testing. Sin since LCMS with the proper column chemistry and endonucleus enzyme and optimized methodology and advanced data processing software can help scientists to characterize mRNA drugs substance quickly with high uh, accuracy. Uh, for the rest of the presentation, I will discuss LCMS-based workflow developed for some of the CQA analysis for M mRNA drug substance. The particular system talked about here is a small benchtop uh, completely integrated system from separation to optical and uh, 
mass spec detection, and the data acquisition and the processing. For the remainder of the presentation, I will talk about the application um, we developed for 5 prime cap, polyatel, oligo sequencing, and the lipid nanoparticle analysis. Um, the data relate to each subject will have this little icon on the top of the page. Although these workflows can be developed on many LCMS vendor systems, the ultimate goal for Waters is to develop these workflows on an easy to use and cost effective LCMS platform with semi-automated data processing capability to lower the technical barrier for scientists. The data included in this presentation were generated on BioCore system here. It uh, contains the Acuity UPLC stack here, and we use uh, oligo separation technology column chemistry with max peak surface technology to minimize the non-specific loss of oligo to the fluidic paths. Um, a benchtop time of flight mass detector is shown here. It's connected with UPLC. The LCMS stack is controlled by Waters Connect informatics platform. It has a network capability. Um, it's also compliance ready. So there are many apps inside Waters Connect. If you hearing me calling apps, apps stands for data processing software. Um, it's just a, an abbreviate term for the uh, software. Um, there are many uh, apps inside Waters Connect that are designed for biologics um, sample analysis. Um, these are Unify app, Intact Mass app, Confirm Sequence app, and Peptide MAM app. So pep, obviously we're not going to talk about Peptide MAM today, but the other three apps all have utilities for oligonucleotide analysis or mRNA um, sample analysis. Unify app is um, a legacy app uh, in Waters Connect. It has a very a lot of different um, um, uh, application specific workflow. One of them is for impurity analysis and small mole analysis. Um, uh, we actually use that for um, lipid nanoparticle uh, characterization. Um, one app is called Intact Mass. It's uh, a software that has a general purpose. It can measure accurate mass for a variety of type of sample, including um, mRNA or oligonucleus, synthetic oligos. It uh, takes the uh, MS channel one data and will do charge deconvolution and assign uh, accurate mass information. Um, and the confirmed sequence is a very specific, specific app. It, it can be used to uh, annotate uh, MSMS fragmentation data from oligo and it will try to match with in silico generated fragment, um, fragment ions. And uh, the scientists can review the output of the matched uh, spectrum and to make a call on how, accurate, uh, how uh, confident this assignment is. For the mRNA, um, CQA measurement, the mRNA drug substance CQA measurement, we have a pretty standard um, workflow. We use RNAs T1 digestion, and the digestive product can be used for uh, 5 prime CAPI analysis, also sequence mapping, and the poly A tail analysis. Before we uh, start working on these uh, applications, we realize uh, there, will be, there will be many challenges. For example, um, because we want to develop 
all the application on a small bench top instrument, uh, we'll realize that for some of those analysis, the sensitivity could be issue. For example, for the five prime cap, usually the signal is very low for cap cap one and, and uh, related, related impurities. And also poly tail analysis. Poly tail is um, highly heterogeneous uh, because you have um, a range of um, uh, poly A all mixed together. So the hydrogenity and the low sense, low MS signal uh, can pose challenge for uh, charge deconvolution. Also the oligo mapping, uh, we're talking about highly complex digest, digested fragments. And it's, you know, unlike monoclonal antibody, when you do peptide mapping, um, the signal usually is pretty strong from uh, the reverse phase uh, LCMS analysis. But here we're um, talking about unpairing reverse phase in negative ion mode. And also we generate a lot more fragments from uh, the um, enonuclease. And among those digested fragments, uh, we will run into ambig ambiguous assignments. The ambiguity come from three cases. For example, we're looking at digested fragments with same sequence repeats. So they're the same. Or digested fragments that are with scramble sequence, but still the same mass. Or the digested fragments with different sequence, but it still ends up with the same mass. So the ambiguity is going to be a lot more frequent compared to um, protein therapeutics. All right, let's start talking about five prime cap analysis. This drawing shows the chemical structure of five prime cap on the five prime end of mRNA. It consists of a guanosine nucleotide connected to mRNA via a five prime to five prime triphosphate linkage. This guanosine is uh, methylated at seventh position directly after capping in vivo by a methyl transfer race. We call this structure cap one. CAP1 structure is what you want as an end product, product. but during the synthesis, um, you will generate other byproducts shown as here. There's four um, uh, potential impurity or byproducts along the way. Um, so for the five prime CAPI analysis, we wanted to one, identify the existence of CAP1 or confirm the existence of CAP1 and also calculate the capping efficiency, meaning you wanted to calculate a ratio of CAP1 against all um, products, including the impurity. In order to mimicking a real life um, sample uh, for five prime capping efficiency uh, measurement, we synthesized a 25 nucleotide long um, oligos with uh, modified cap, cap one, also the four um, synthesis byproducts. The reason behind that is that most of most popular cap cap one efficiency measurement is done by using complementary DNA probe directed um, and with a site specific RNA cleavage. Uh, so, so these samples synthesized here are mimicking what the DNA probe and uh, RNA's digestion will do. Um, so in, without getting, getting into too much detail, so we uh, did a dilution series. So we held the CAP1 constant in the mixture and and then we did a uh, 1 to 10, 1 to 100, and a 1 to 1,000 dilution with the um, other impurities. And we collect a fast reverse phase unpairing LCMS run. Uh, we did 5 minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, uh, all of which 
uh, can show um, some degree of separation. And, and then we'll plug the data in the Intact Mass app for data processing to see if we can identify the CAP1 and also calculate the capping efficiency shown here um, using this equation. So what does the um, data output looks like after uh, Intact Mass app? processing. So this example come from 1 to 100 dilution of CAP1. Um, the software actually identified CAP1 and 3 out of 4 impurities by the accurate mass measurement. Uh, we set the mass tolerance at 10 ppm level. And also it calculate the uh, CAP efficiency to be at 95.7%. Um, so a combination of the calculated value for CAP1 and also um, the accurate mass measurement gave us pretty good confidence in this methodology. So what if you do just want to use RNA's T1 digested sample directly for five prime capping and measurement? Yes, you can do it. We actually tested on a uh, research uh, grade mRNA sample. It's about 1,029 nucleotide long. Um, after treating with RNA's T1, and we run uh, a 45 minute long gradient, using reverse phase ion pairing method. And we were actually able to see the CAP1 fragments. So in this case, the, the CAP1 only has uh, two nucleotides with a phosphate attached to it. It's A and G. Um, and the signal is pretty low for the CAP1, but we were able to see the doubly and singly charged ion and the, the intact mass app process the data did charge deconvolution and give you the um, the neutral mass. However though we did not see any of the synthesis byproduct in the sample. Uh, there could be uh, many reasons but I suspect that, that it's either the signal is too low uh, or um, it's not retained on the column. But nevertheless, uh, we were able to detect CAP1 with high confidence. Um, so that, yeah, so if you don't want to use the DNA probe, and you can you can try to, try to give the RNAs T1 digest sample a try. All right, let's talk about three prime poly A tail heterogeneity measurement. We did uh, RNAs T1 digested uh, mRNA sample. In this case, we used a Firefly luciferase mRNA as a test subject. We also optimized ion pairing reverse phase gradient for poly A tail analysis. Uh, we used a 10 minute, 10 minute long gradient. This fast gradient um, enables a, a better focus of the poly A tail peak on the uh, reverse phase column. Because it's highly heterogeneous, you don't want the peak spread too uh, wide on the column. And another thing um, I want to bring your attention is that instead of using a serial nitrile for mobile phase, we used 75% uh, ethanol as solvent uh, B. And uh, ethanol compared to a serial nitrile gave slightly improved uh, sensitivity and um, also slice, slightly reduced uh, background noise. So overall, the chromatogram looks very good. What happens if you sum the peak from the poly A tail? The raw spectrum here, uh, summed from poly A tail, looks messy due to the high heterogeneity of the of the tail lens. The intact mass app was able to uh, do charge deconvolution on such uh, complex profile. And then the output from the data process, processing shows a distinct profile of mass with consistent mass shift. 
the mass shift at 329 Dalton matches with the mass of an adenosine. One thing I did not show here is that the intact mass app allows user to put the target mass in the method and allows the pluses or minuses of and denosing uh, mass shift. So therefore, when you have the output table, it will tell you how long is that particular peak. The intact mass app will give you um, the, all the poly tail that's been identified uh, with their intensity from the direct um, ion pairing reverse phase analysis using the RNAs T1 digestion method. And you can export the, uh, the results from Intact Mass app to Excel file for further analysis. For example, we can calculate uh, the relative abundance of each individual poly A tail. Um, and, and then to get the average, the weighted average poly A tail length. In this case, for the luciferase mRNA, we got 126.5 uh, mer long um, tail. And how do we know the number is as good as it can be? Uh, we actually developed another method. It's an orthogonal method using SEC UV. Um, the SEC UV uh, was applied to a series of poly A tail standards uh, to calibrate uh, the retention time. And using that method, we also get similar uh, results as the LCMS method. A combination of both orthogonal approach gave us identical value. Um, and that gave us confidence in the direct analysis of poly tail heterogeneity using LCMS approach. Next topic is oligosequencing. Um, for both the UTR and the open reading frame. Um, it's really challenging for um, mRNA sample. As I mentioned, this is not like doing peptide mapping. Um, there's a lot of ambiguity in the assignment, which I will discuss in the next few slides. Again, the workflow, the sample prep is still the same. We use RNAs T1 digestion, and after that, we do direct uh, injection um, of the digested sample onto OST column and using the biocore system for uh, separation and the mass detection. And that the data processing is uh, done in the intact mass app inside Waters Connect. I just want to mention there's um, two micro apps inside uh, Waters Connect to help uh, perform the uh, oligo mapping because Intact Mass app is a, a pretty generic software that it does um, very well in terms of doing charge deconvolution for various types of um, molecules and it can be small or very large. The two new macro apps are specific for oligo mapping. One of them is called mRNA cleaver. It's really allow people to uh, say what enzyme you're using for the digestion. What are the, some of the filter uh, you use to make the data analysis um, with less false positive. And also the coverage viewer is more of a display of the output. Uh, for vi visual uh, impact. This, the first example is from single guided RNA digestion. Single guided RNA or sgRNA is a component of the CRISP-Cas9 system, a genome editing tool. In this example, uh, this single guided RNA is about 100 mer long. It has various uh, modification on several uh, monomers. It's mostly uh, two 
O-methylation um, on guanosine, uh, adenosine, and the uridine. And in, um, in the method editor, um, we can choose special symbols for modified monomers as highlighted here. So the software will realize that those are modifications on um, the single guided RNA. And there's two um, stacked uh, chromatogram. One is in red trace, that's undigested single guided RNA. And as you can see that intact single guided RNA at the end, um, um, and the other one is RNAs T1 digested uh, sample. You can see there are many peaks, and there's no there's no um, undigested single guided RNA in the chromatogram. So so this shows that the digestion is, was complete. I forgot to mention that the chromatographic peak on the is still on phase. I'm pairing reverse phase, and it's a 45 minute long gradient method. Um, this is a screen capture of the digestion method setup in one of the micro app. Um, you can put the sequence information here, and then there's an option for enzyme selection. And there's some uh, digestion parameter, for example, um, if you want to choose a number of miscleavage or if it has semi-digestion uh, product um, in, in the final product and what kind of modification you have on the monomers. Um, also, you can put some filter in the search. For, for example, you can restrict the, how long the, the fragments from the digestions are. And, and then there's some MS settings. Uh, it's negative ion mode, and we choose to use monoisotopic peak uh, for final mass measurement instead of average. What happens after data process is complete? You can actually view the output in the coverage mapper. Um, Here's the single guided RNA sequence with green and red color coded sequence. So the green means it's being uh, confirmed and the red um, residues are not confirmed. Um, the software does that, it, it's actually quite straightforward. So the software will look at the experimental data to charge the convolu convolution of all the components from the data and then try to match the the um, charge deconvoluted mass with in silico uh, digested uh, fragment mass. And if it's a match below the uh, mass accuracy setting, then it's a confirm. And in this case, uh, we actually got 91% sequence coverage uh, just by uh, MS channel one mass confirmation. Uh, we did not use uh, MSMS fragmentation data. Um, yeah, so sgRNA is small enough to have less ambiguous assignment. Um, so the 91% sequence coverage is all um, unique masses. So the single guided RNA output from the intact mass app search, we, we got 91% sequence coverage, which is great. What happens if you apply the same methodology on a much bigger mRNA sample? Shown here is um, a RNAs T1 digested uh, cyprodina luciferase mRNA. It is about 2000 nucleotide long. The chromatogram looks pretty busy. And if you look, uh, look underneath each peak, you will see uh, multiple components, meaning there's a lot of coelution happening. So the Intact Mass app data processing output can be displayed here for the um, uh, Saffredina luciferase mRNA mapping. If, if you look at the left uh, coverage mapper view, that is a result from 
uh, only the unique mass. We're, ex we're excluding all the ambiguity in the output. So there's no ambiguous assignment. We got 39% sequence coverage. But if you say, okay, I can include all the ambiguous assignment, then you nearly double the sequence coverage at 75%. Uh, so at least the software has the ability to account for ambiguous sequence. Um, but we, at this stage, the intact mass app only uh, annotate the MS1 data. Um, so your sequence coverage is, um, if, you, if you use unique mass, it's pretty confident. Um, uh, but if you have ambiguous assignment, Oh, ambiguous fragments, you will need other um, methodology, other approach to confirm them. There is a 2023 paper published on the scientific reports by Pfizer. They developed a comprehensive analytical methodology for the BioNTech mRNA drug substance. They use a combination of MS1 and MSMS data, and they use three different commercial software and also in-house software to achieve uh, ultimately 100% sequence coverage. So for our workflow, at least for the oligo mapping, we're not quite there, um, but that that's our um, future goal. But at, at least at this point, we're we have pretty uh, good workflow for MS1 only um, assignment. Um, we're not completely handicapped. Um, so we remember I mentioned there's another app called Confirm Sequence in the Waters Connect. Uh, Confirm Sequence uh, is capable of annotating MSMS fragment data from oligos. Um, and then you can look at the display, the coverage dot uh, map as shown here. If you have a two ambiguous assignment, uh, for example, possibility one versus possibility two, and you put both sequence in the confirmed sequence app and then, and then compare the in silico fragment ion with the experimental data for these uh, two possible sequence. And then you can tell one of them obviously has more sequence coverage, it's 100% versus only three out of um, nine sequences being confirmed. So um, just by, by um, the coverage of the fragments, you will say this one on the left is more uh, probable um, um, candidate than the other one. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, even though um, the bio core has a, a tough mass detector, uh, but you can still do DIA type of fragmentation. Uh, DIA stands for data independent acquisition. So there's a way to generate, generate fragmentation data at the step wave region so that when you collect the data, you have alternate scan. The first scan is uh, just MS1, low collision energy. The second scan is high collision energy. You can set a ramping range, so therefore you generate the fragment ion. So you alternate those low high um, collision energy MS scan. Uh, you will see two identical chromatogram. One is from your low energy data. The other one is from your high energy data. And then the software will know which one is which. You lose, use the low energy scan to give you um, charge deconvoluted uh, accurate mass. And then the confirmed sequence will look at the high energy data and uh, give you an assignment of the coverage on the digested oligos. So by doing this, a combination of intact mass app and the confirmed sequence app, you have a way to uh, rule out some of those ambiguous assignment. Before we run out of time, let's talk about the lipid nanoparticle workflow. This um, 
This slide shows the composition of mRNA lipid nanoparticle. Uh, there's four common ones that use for the delivery system. Uh, they're ionizable lipid, cholesterol, uh, phospholipid, and the pegylate lipid. Uh, there's a pretty wide dynamic, dynamic range. And the, the, the purity of the lipid um, has a pretty big impact on mRNA's um, drugs um, safety and efficacy. So those lipid components need to be well characterized. Also, their impurities need to be carefully measured. There are two uh, a uh, workflow that we developed in uh, actually using Unified App inside Waters Connect. One is called the Discovery um, Workflow. The other one is called Screening Workflow. Um, in short, Discovery 2 means you treat all the lipid components as novelty, and you do a really thorough characterization on both the active ingredient and also their uh, impurities. Once you have enough information, you can create a scientific library that contains all the important components that you want a screening um, for a, for example, like a new batch of sample. Um, you can apply the, the screening workflow uh, in Unify to do the screening analysis for a, a quick uh, measurement of um, those impurities. Um, I don't want to give too much detail on the screening workflow because it's pretty well established uh, using Unify app. And here's just an example to show what you can do. This is the MC3 lipid. Um, and we did a stress study on this lipid. You can see the main component along with some of those um, modifi modified um, lipid after the stress study. And in, you know, in the discovery mode, we have done a pretty well characterization on this main component and its impurity. We uh, generate a scientific library for a screening purpose. When you do the screening analysis, it will tell you um, it will tell you what the assignments are based on the accurate mass measurement, but it also, it goes, remember we collect DIA mode, so you have fragmentation data. For example, um, here the fragmentation data from the oxid oxidized MC3 um, lipid, and it, th those fragmentation actually indicate where the fragmentation sites is, it's right around here. So, so yeah, so this, this screening workflow can allow you quickly assign what are those impurities and then the high energy data that include in the scientific library can give you a higher confidence in the assignment. So today I talked about the four different uh, applications that we developed for mRNA uh, analysis from five prime capping, sequencing, poly tail and the lipid nanoparticle analysis. Um, so what are the future work? Uh, we just started this whole project. There's a lot more to do. Um, we hope there will be a mRNA standards for method development or a system check purpose. Um, the NIST map reference material is very helpful in terms of uh, giving people opportunity to optimize their application workflow. And, and because it's readily available, you, you can, and the quality is good, so you can always purchase their, their reference material for method development. So we hope to have similar uh, standards available for mRNA sample that allow uh, uh, scientists to to optimize their mRNA workflow. And also, Waters is also actively working on um, using potentially new um, uh, endonucleotides for mRNA digestion. So a different enzyme, uh, maybe we can use enzyme that digest at a particular sequence motif um, that can reduce the number of isobaric digestion fragments and hence reduce the ambiguous assignment, even with MS 
one data processing. And then maybe use a combination of different enzymes to do the mapping. We can generate overlapping sequences, which can also improve the overall sequence coverage. And lastly, we want to continue to improve our software capability. Um, for example, we can add uh, MS2 capability for um, uh, resolve some of those ambiguous assignment. Also, we wanted to uh, improve the overall automation for data processing so that <clears throat> user intervention is reduced to minimum. If you wish to know more about the workflow I discussed today, here is a list of application nodes that we published on mRNA. Uh, from five prime cap sequence analysis, lipid nanoparticle, and three prime tau. There are a lot of uh, information you can find in this app note, particularly on the uh, experimental uh, setup.